Hello everyone, several of you have asked me to explain the difference between the two coordinate systems, tangential normal coordinates versus polar coordinates. The difference is best illustrated by looking at how each system would view an object's motion. Let's consider this object in motion. At the first point in time, it is moving in curved motion with its center of curvature at O. As it moves on, its turn gets sharper and it ends up at this second point. Now the velocity equations are relatively simple, so we will focus on the object's acceleration to illustrate this difference. For the tangential normal coordinate system, we have its tangential acceleration in the same direction as its motion, and its normal acceleration is towards its center of curvature. At this point in time, the center of curvature is O, so the radius of curvature, rho, is the distance to O. For the polar system, before we calculate the motion, we need to establish a point of reference, which we will set at O. R, then, will be the distance to the object from O, and theta will be the angle between R and the initial starting R. Since the object is just at its starting position right now, theta is zero. The object will have acceleration in the radial direction and acceleration in the transverse direction, both of which are calculated based on the equations. It is interesting to note that for this point in time, the polar point of reference and the center of curvature are currently at the same point. This means that the tangential and traverse accelerations will be exactly the same while the normal and radial accelerations will share the same magnitude and be oriented in different directions. An easy way to illustrate this is to show what we would get if the object was moving in a circle about O. R would be constant, so R dot and R double dot go to zero, causing polar velocity and polar acceleration to simplify to this. We also know that theta dot is the same as angular velocity and theta double dot is the same as angular acceleration. This means that r theta dot is the same as velocity. The radial acceleration would be equal to negative v squared over r and the transverse acceleration would be equal to dv dt. However, this only happens at this point in time because the center of curvature and the reference point for the polar coordinate system are exactly the same. Coming back to the original trajectory, when the object has traveled to the second point, the tangential acceleration will be in the same direction as the velocity, and the normal acceleration will be perpendicular to that, towards the center of curvature. At this point, the radius of curvature and the center of curvature will be different than the first point because the curve itself is different. Now if the object traveled along this path, its normal acceleration and center of curvature would look something like this instead. Now let's look at the polar coordinates. Like they were at the first point, the polar accelerations will be with respect to the point of origin, O. Theta now has a non-zero value, as you can see. R is the distance to the object from our reference point, and the radial acceleration will extend in that same direction. Finally, the transverse acceleration will be perpendicular to that. This shows the difference between the two systems. The tangential normal system defines things based on the object's current motion, while the polar system looks on from a fixed vantage point. The tangential normal system gives velocity and acceleration with respect to the object's own motion. This makes it useful for calculating things like the maximum speed at which a car can round a curve or the strength required for a wrecking ball cable. The polar system, on the other hand, gives that information with respect to an observation point separate from the object in motion. An example of a place where that would be useful would be a camera system that tracks a race car. The camera's panning data will give theta, theta dot, and theta double dot. Take that, 
throw in a reference location, do some math, and you can calculate the car's equations of motion. Now, either system could be used in any given problem. The trick is knowing which system is best suited to the problem. Generally, if you are just looking at one point in time and the information given is only with respect to the object in motion, that's a big hint that the tangential normal system would work better. However, if you have a fixed reference point and a reference distance, the polar system might work better. So that's the difference between the two systems. The tangential normal system is defined based on the object and its current motion, as if you are riding on the object. The polar system gives the equations of an object's motion with respect to a fixed point of reference, like you are standing apart and observing it move. Let me know if you have any questions, and I look forward to answering them.